Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm George Call here in Loveland, Colorado with uh, part one of a three-part series called First Thaw. And um, I'm hoping this will be three sessions. It's a lot to bite off here, but I think it's manageable in three sessions. And each one of the um, uh, tapings will be about uh, 35 minutes apiece, 30, 35 minutes. So today's about 30 minutes. And uh, we start with a blank canvas, and we finish up pretty much with paint throughout the whole canvas. So we did a two-part thing today. One, we figured out where the shapes would be. Two, we filled in the shapes with color value. And that was our first stab at what we did. Pretty much used the number 10 the whole time brush, and uh, that's how we covered all this uh, acreage with uh, paint so quickly. All right, so you can start and stop anytime and uh, put me on pause to uh, catch up with me as I paint along. And um, that would be the whole process. So feel free to join me every week for the tutorials. I'm going to have three this week, and um, I think you're going to have a lot of fun on this one. It's a great reference. It's not my reference. It was uh, donated to me by uh, one of my good painting friends, uh, Lise. And I want to thank her for such a great reference. Okay, with that, enough I've said. Let's get started with today's painting. All right, bye-bye. Good morning, and welcome to uh, part one of this uh, new series that we have here. And uh, I'm calling this painting First Thaw. And uh, so far it's planned for three sessions. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. I have my uh, Zoom students here, and I appreciate everybody tuning in on YouTube and Uscreen. Thank you very much. Um, down below here, you see I have my trusty T7 uh, knife, and my number 10, 8, 4, and 2. I probably won't use these small guys so much today. And... Uh, but I think I will be using this one. It's kind of an old scrubber. It's an old bright. And I'm going to be using it to draw my shapes. Today being the part uh, one is block in. And by the end of this session, we want to know where these shapes are going to be on this canvas. It would also be nice if we got this far along where we could also get our value color in. I'll explain that as we go, what value color is, if you're not familiar with that term yet. And um, so I'm working on a 17 by 22. I'll have this reference up on my website, georgecallgreatart.com, for you to download. Of course, the Zoom students, you can get that off my student update if you want to um, get the reference off the uh, student update that I send out weekly to you all. All right, so I have my paper towels down here, but I don't have enough, so let me get some more off the side. I should have been prepared. So I'm going to get some here in the next room. And now I have my paper towels off to, to the side and ready to go, as well as my coffee. All right, so let's mix up some drawing color. So let's just go blue. Anything dark. I have some gray here from last week. Burnt sienna, viridian. I'm going to add some gray in there and some white. Oh, that's a pretty, it's like, I call it a, a gun gray, gun barrel gray. I make up these names as I go. And I hope I've made enough material here to uh, get this big shape in. What I mean by big shape is the design of the water. So I know that down here, about halfway it comes off, and about here it comes off the canvas, about right here. So I know this is going to be water, dark. And where else does it come off? I think there's kind of a, 
an angle that comes off here, up, and then it comes more than halfway up, I think, up in this area. And then there's also an island in here. And it, it kind of ends in this area. And this comes across here. And then it goes back at an angle. Pretty rough, and you can see I'm putting it in kind of thin. And this is the this is the stream. So now I'm going to add a little bit more turp to the mixture so it's thinner. And I'm going to be probably put too much in there. And it would probably be better if I had a bigger brush to do this in. I think there's another island up here too. And I'm just kind of playing around to see if my shape is in the right place. Yeah, I don't want this too high or too low. I mean, this is the kind of questions I'm asking myself right now. Is, is my design appropriate for my canvas? Now, if you have like a more of a rectangle, this is 17 by 22, it's more square-like. But if you have more of a rectangle, longer rectangle, you may want to move these edges out even farther. And I gotta move to a bigger brush. This isn't doing me any good. Bigger brush. So I just go to my number 10. I've got some Murphy's oil in it from last week when I cleaned it. I think I last worked on my, I haven't been in the studio since Saturday working on paintings. And that's when I last cleaned my brushes. And down here's a waterfall, so I want to kind of keep part of that light down here. And that's why I did the paper towel thing. And I think this comes over quite a ways. It's, it's a stump, I think, in here. And I will be thinning that out in this area, too. It goes up quite a ways. I'm kind of making this one solid color. And this is the money shot right here. This is the money design. This is what we... Now in this area that's going to be the waterfall, I'm going to just thinly put in paint and then thin it out with a rag. All right, I'm going to get back and take a look at this design because this is the big deal right here and see if that works. So as you can see, it's just an abstract shape that we're going to be working with. Now with that in, and I, I stepped back, I liked it so far, doesn't mean I'm not going to change it here and there. If I do need to change it, I just get some stuff on, uh, some turp on my, my paper towel and, you know, erase it or do something like that, okay? So, with that, I'm going to see if I can do some other designs here. And I think this has got a steeper slope to it, so I'm going to erase some of this here. And I think this flattens out more here, so I'm erasing that. And then there's a hill that comes in, or it comes in like this. Now, back here, it's... Um, it's kind of in shadow, a lot of it. So I'm going to just uh, put in, I really watered down that same mixture. Not watered, but turped down. 
and I'm going to put this in to say that that's going to be a lot of shadow back in there. Now, if you want to have some strokes of light, you can just go like it has in the reference. I just put some turp on my, my brush. I dried it off. And you can put some of that strokes there. There's also kind of a, in this area, right in here, there's some worms or some dark shadows coming in at a pretty good rate. Right up in here. There's a little pine tree in there too. All right, so this still has to come over more. And we'll do that. All right, I'm going to get back and look at it again because this is really important to do that. We're fitting this abstract shape to our canvas. That's the big deal here. All right. With that being said, let's do the next step. And that is to change our mixture. So we have a lot of blue in here and some burnt sienna. I'm going to do a little bit more burnt sienna than blue. I'm going to add a little bit of gray. And I'm going to add some more of this because this is going to be our tree design. And whoop, stay away from the green. It's a little bit of gray. So it's burnt sienna, ultra blue, and cold gray. The uh, palette that I'm using is a basic palette plus some, some extras. My basic palette is here on the top. Ultra blue, permanent red medium, lemon yellow, Naples yellow deep, cold gray. The stuff I've added this week is burnt sienna, viridian, yellow ochre, and of course, uh, titanium white in my lower right is part of my basic palette. Alrighty, let's see what I can do here. Still with this number 10, this number 10 is still really pretty good. It's still got a sharp edge on it. So let me get this fellow right over here. It's kind of an angled tree here. And then I have some straight tree. So I'm getting the big guys in first just to try to get some feeling for that. And then I've got one right at the tip here. And actually, I think he goes out a little bit farther here. So I'll put him about right here. And he's got a little bit of angle on him. And I think he's thinner too. Maybe not that thin. I'll give him a little bit more oomph. Now, as you can see, now I need to correct this and get some white coming up to him. Okay. Correction made. Now it's time, I think, for this fellow down here. He's kind of a, a, a root. and stump. And he's got a bunch of little fellas coming off of him, but they're not going to do any good to get those in now. We'll get all these little guys later, like over here there's a whole bunch of little fellas. But let's go back to that mixture of Ultra Blue. I'm making some more. Mixing with my brush, which isn't the smartest thing to do in the world. I'm going to add some more cold gray and just this time a little bit of white and I'm going to more of a gray mixture now and I see a lot of fellas over in here. <coughs> hey 
Hey, Jan, I wonder if you could uh, mute unless you have a question. Oh, sorry. It's all right. And there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. You can go, probably the smartest thing to do is to go from bottom and then go up top from there. A lot of lumber back there, folks, I'll tell you. We're going to be busy. Now, I typically put in more tree um, stumps and than I need, trunks, because I usually lose a lot of them when I come back and paint around them. So I think the beauty of this reference is all this stuff going on down here. And back here, there's just a whole lot of lumber back in this area. And in here, there's a lot. Now, one thing I'm trying to avoid is equal, equal, equal. I want to crowd some and then give some some space. And as I go back, I think there's another slope up here. And I'm just going to put a lot more right up in here. Oh, lost my image. Now, with that in, it gives you another idea to step back and say, where do I need to fix my basic shape? That's what I'm going to do. And I need to do some changing. So I'm going to go back to my original mixture of blue, burnt sienna, pretty, and a little bit of gray. And I'm going to make some changes. Need more blue in there. I made this mixture a little darker, not by design, it just worked out that way. I didn't concentrate that much on it. And I'm saying, where do I need my darks and my water? And I know I got need to get some right in here. And here. And here. You can see I'm really pressing hard on that. And here. And here. Some real good darks. And I need to make this wider. Again, I'm looking at my design and and this stops right up at that tree. And my island, I think, could be reshaped a little bit. And I'm doing some reshaping. So feel free to get your shaping done at this time. This is a really important time to do that. All right, I've got some product left over. I'm going to pick it up. It takes up a lot of room, but you can see from the overhead or whatever, there's not much left, but I've got enough to maybe for, make a few strokes if I need it again. And I'm going to really clean this up because I'm going to go to a lighter mixture now.
So I'm going to start with a lot of white. That is a big goober of white, that is for sure. And I'm going to spread it out a little bit with my knife. And I'm going to get a little bit of ultra blue on this side. Ultra blue, a little bit of gray. And over here, I'm going to have some ultra blue. And no gray. And over here, I'm going to have some, a little bit of Naples and white. A little bit of Naples, not, oh, that was too much. There we go. And I have just some warm white there. Neat stuff. Okay. Now I know I have a lot more foliage here in the front, but I'm going to put that in later. I'm going to go back to my, my big brush. And I'm going to go to my ultra blue. And I'm going to put in some shadow shapes. And I'm following some examples and from the reference. I need some more ultra blue. And I see a lot over on this side too. That was a bad mixture. You can see I streak some harder blue in there. And again, this is just ultra blue. White. A lot of shadow on this side. More shadow than light in here. I think our brain, to interpret this, we sometimes see when there's more shadow and light, we see more light than shadow. It's something our brain does. I've got rocks in here too I need to get in. I need a darker blue in here. So I've got more Ultra, and I'm putting that in here. Now back here, there's a lot of shadow, and I'm going to start going to the gray-blue for back there. A little bit more blue, a little bit more gray, a little bit more gray. This is a cold gray by Rembrandt. So as I go back, I'm adding more blue, more gray. And as you can see, I'm eliminating because I'm speeding along a lot of my trees that I've put in. I'm going to have to go back and lay those in again. But at least we have an idea of what's going on back there. I'm going to put a streak of light back here. 
down and I've got contamination in my brush. But you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm adding some light in here. Added a little turp to it too. But you get the idea of what I'm doing back in here. Let me admire this. Stepping back. All right, there's a bunch of shadows coming down this hill. I'm just going to go whoop. I think the shadow design changes even from here to here. So there's some different stuff going on. There's also a pine tree in there. I'll try to get that in. And I think there's a light right in here, too. So by this stage, you're starting to really get a feel for where all these pretty designs are coming in. I really, wow, surprised myself. That's looking pretty good at such an early stage. And the last thing I'll do here at today's lesson is get these lights in. A lot to do on this painting, but this is a, I think we've made some pretty good progress here. So let's go to our lights. And let's get some of that in. So I'm just going to lay that in pretty hard. In these big areas. Again, this is just titanium white and a little bit of Naples. Little bit of Naples. Just to warm it up a little. Now, some of this is going to get kind of boring here between the trees, but I'll probably off camera do a little bit more work between the trees just so I don't take up all this camera time and it takes so long to download to, to my computer and then to YouTube and to Uscreen. And I think I need to have a nice light up in here. You can see I've been using this number 10 the whole time. 12 will do you good too. I'm referring to brush there. Your brush. All right. Now, there's a lot of soft edges in here. And so I'm going to go back and soften those edges with my T7. And I will do the same over in here. Oop, missed a place down here. Got some white here. I'll put it right in here. And I think I'm going to use some of that right in here too, where the water comes down and comes off there. And so I'm going to soften that. See, I use vertical and horizontal depending on which way the direction of the trees are. All 
All right, let's get back and look at these things. Well, that is the start of today's painting. Oop, I kicked the camera. I've got a little bit of dark left. I think I'll go back with my knife and reinforce some of my darks. And do that with my knife also. I think I need to bring my dark in a little bit here, and I just don't have enough product to do that. Right in here, it has to come in. So I've got a shape problem. So let's go back with a little bit of ultra blue, burnt sienna, and gray. And go back to your big shapes and just reinforce those with your, your darker mixture. Like I'm doing right now. So there's a few of these that are important anchors and they're the ones that I'm reinforcing. Okay, I'm going to go back with more Ultra, more Burnt Sienna. Got to check my time. Yeah, I'm coming up on time, so I need to do some of that off camera. So at least get A, B, and C, your big anchors, uh, reinforced. And then off camera, I'll be reinforcing some of these little guys in the back, like I'm showing you right now. So what I'm going to be doing is Ultra Blue, Burnt Sienna, Gray, and bringing some of these back in that I've softened too much. All right, with that, I'll bring this section one block in to a close. And we're successful in getting the canvas covered in paint with the right values in the right place. That's what we wanted to accomplish today. And off camera, I'll be reinforcing some of my little um, trunks here that, that I've lost. With that, I'll bring it to a close. Thank you so much for tuning in. Zoom students, you can unmute and we can start talking again and uh, we'll bring this to a close. Bye-bye.